Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I always forget my microphone. Hope everybody's good tonight. I always forget to pull this thing down. I don't leave it up. Look at that. Put my pop filter right in front of the camera. There we go. That might be a little bit better. Hope everybody's doing all right tonight. Hope everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control hanging out with you guys tonight. Thursday night, appreciate everybody who showed up. We got a few people in chat now, about six people in, in the room. Hello, Jennifer. Nice to see you tonight. Hope everybody's looking forward to the weekend. I had a question that somebody had asked me, and I wanted to talk about it, but I can't find it, and it has disappeared. Oh. So if anybody has any questions about anything, bed bugs, roaches, fleas, anything at all, you're uh, welcome to ask. I'm here to answer your questions for a little while tonight. See, see if there's anything that I can answer at all to help anybody out about their bugs or bed bugs, roaches, fleas, bees, hornets, millipedes. So I had something I did today that I haven't done in quite a long time. I don't think I've really ever done it. Um, I had a video go live. So um, if you check my YouTube, go over to my YouTube channel. If you're here watching, be sure to click the subscribe button right here or like the video tonight. And if you go over to my videos, I posted this video this morning. So this is a video on millipedes. So in Virginia, we have had a crazy, crazy amount of millipedes that have been coming in to the homes all around central, southeast, northern, all over the all over the entire state of Virginia, because we've been in a uh, serious drought over the last maybe three or four months. Um, so millipedes are little worm-like bugs that come into the house and by the millions and uh invade all over the place and so i did have a video go live this morning i usually don't do but one video a day if if at all uh typically tuesdays i have my videos go live and i have my live streams on thursday night so um but anyway i did have a video go live this morning and here i am tonight to talk to you guys about your bug problems so i didn't know if anybody caught that video or not it hasn't had very many views it's not a very popular thing to talk about because it's typically just you know around Virginia so anyway Carlos came in tonight and he said that he's got them in his car so I'm a, I'm, I'm figuring they're bed bugs because he says he's in Ve uh, he's in Vegas and the temperature outside is 113 degrees but they are still there and that is true because bed bugs don't die uh, at 113 degrees the adults uh, will die at 118 plus and the eggs will die at 125 plus so the typically the the max temperature you need your automobile to be is above 125 degrees 130 is about the sweet spot but it has to be throughout including the trunk um, which is really hard to do and so typically I recommend treating with a crossfire uh, in your vehicle because it is a, a higher temperature pesticide it does work through higher temperatures and you can treat your vehicle, and it will kill your bed bugs in your vehicle. So that's what I recommend to use in a vehicle. I know I talk about Crossfire a lot. In fact, I did a, um, in fact, last, was it last week? Uh, maybe the week before that. I actually did a review on Crossfire. So if you're curious about, you know, how I rank Crossfire, um, then go check out that video. But I also have a video going live uh, Tuesday next week on diatomaceous earth which i give an honest review and i go over um you know and i, and I go over everything I, I i feel like i gave it justice and because for those of you who watch me regularly know that i don't use de i don't recommend anybody to use de for the control of bed bugs because of the issues that it has with um respiratory disease and that it can cause uh the silica dioxide that's in de can cause problems with breathing and it can cause problems with emphysema, uh, asthma, and all kinds of different things like that. So I don't recommend using it. Um, in fact, silicosis is, is really common uh, when you use DE. 
Uh, so I don't recommend it. Um, I'm sure you get this question at least once a week, if not once a day. I found out that I had bed bugs in May, and I just found out just found you and your videos. Okay, so what is your question? <laughs> uh, Kay Jenner, by the way, just at, uh, just said that. I do get questions every day about bed bugs. It's a real common thing for me to get questions about bed bugs. But um, but yeah. So if you're ever curious, if you're on the fence about trying Crossfire, you're really curious about how well it works or um, the proper way to use it, then you could check out my videos. Like I said, if you go to my channel and you just have to scroll down a very short distance in videos right here, um, there's my review of Crossfire right there. And in fact, if you go to the playlists. Here, you could go right here at the very top. It's how to get rid of. It's the three to four step pest control solutions anyone can do. And so if you click this playlist, I have 10 videos in this playlist. And the very first video is bed bugs. That's how I opened that specific playlist was how to get rid of bed bugs. So if you're curious about, you know, how to do it and how to do it correctly. Um, I know a lot of people will comment on my videos. They'll come in and they'll say things like, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll say, I know this video is really old. This video might be three years old. This video might be four years old. Um, does this still apply today? And if it doesn't apply, I wouldn't have the video up there. So I always keep my videos current. And if for some reason something stops working, I would go through and delete the old video and put up a new one. So just so you know, if you are on my channel and you see the hundreds of videos that I have posted on my channel and you're wondering if, oh, is this going to still work today? It does because I will go back and I do read every comment on every single video and I respond to as many comments as I possibly can. Um, not just, you know, when the video is first released, but for the lifetime of the video, I'm still commenting on videos over five years old because people are still commenting on them. So... Uh, so Kay Jenner says, bought Crossfire, stripped everything down, treated mattress cracks, crevices, baseboards, etc. And then I was bitten again a week later. I waited until three weeks to treat again last Sunday. And I was bitten the next day and then the last night as well. I know you've answered this, but I just need some peace of mind that Crossfire is working and it'll be okay. Um, so Crossfire, sometimes it takes a couple of applications. If you have an extreme case of bed bugs where the bed bugs are, like I said, and even if you don't have an extreme case, there's always the chance that the bugs are not coming out to bite immediately. This does happen sometimes. So what will happen is typically a bed bug will come out within six to 10 days to bite you, um, you know, depending on when it's hatched or whatever. And so uh, that's normal, but they don't always come out. Sometimes they'll stay back a few weeks and they won't come out right away. And depending on when you have applied the pesticide, you may have to apply a second time in order to kill the um, in order to kill the bed bugs that are hiding back away because crossfire is only good for 30 days. So once you apply it after the 30 day lifespan is up, you're going to need to reapply if you continue to get bit. Um, you will get bit after you apply. It's really common to, to have this. Like if this is the first time you've ever sprayed it and you've never used it before, it's a non-repellent. It doesn't keep the bed bugs away. It actually draws them to you. So it behaves as though it's not there. And so the bed bugs still come out. They still crawl across the surface. They still bite and they will eventually die. In fact, a lot of times I will flip mattresses over after I've done a crossfire treatment and found dead bed bugs on the floor. And there's only one you know, right reason that there would be dead bug bed bugs on the floor is because they crawled up and they crawled back down and when they did they died and fell on the floor. Um so that's a real common thing. Uh Carlos Gonzilla Gonz Gonz I cannot talk tonight at all. I know the name. I can say the name. If I wasn't tongue tied I'd be able to say your name. But Carlos, uh how do you feel about Semexa? i have a really bad cough. So Semexa is silica dioxide, which is very similar to what is in diatomaceous earth, which I actually go over in my next video coming out on Tuesday. I actually do an honest review of diatomaceous earth. I ought to do one of Semexa. I ought to really go over Semexa and explain um, the, the similarities between Semexa and DE because there is a, um, there's an argument amongst pest control professionals out there that Semexa is better than DE or DE is better than Semexa. And they are both extremely similar, so similar that I probably wouldn't use either one of them to control bed bugs, especially if I were a, um, 
like a, a consumer that isn't really familiar on how to apply dust properly because if you improperly apply dust, you will hurt yourself. You will get a cough. You will get these issues with breathing in the silica. Now, people will tell me, they'll say, oh, well, I wore a dust mask, so I'm safe. No, that's not true because you don't wear a dust mask in your house 24 hours a day and the dust is in the air. You know, if you shine a light and the light beam comes across, um, you know, through the room, you can see the dust. If you stare off into the distance, you can see the dust in the air. It's just a normal thing that occurs in, in your house and that's why it settles down on all of your surfaces. Well, when you put DE on your mattress or in your, even if you puff it in your light sockets or somewhere like that where you really can't, you know, necessarily get to it, anything that puffs out of the socket is going to puff into the room. It is a very difficult thing to apply the dust to where it goes exactly where it needs to go and nowhere else. And so I don't really recommend using dust for a consumer. There are options out there that are just as good or better than dust. And so there's no reason to put yourself at risk using a dust when you can use a pesticide that's actually safer and works better. Um, so uh, Bama fan says, how to get rid of a possum around the house? Is there a deterrent to keep them away? Yes, I, I hear lead is a really good deterrent for possums if you're having a problem with possums. In fact, lead poisoning is the best way to get rid of a possum. I'm just kidding. If you, if you catch them, you can catch a possum. You know, you can catch it and get rid of it. But um, in Virginia, we do not have... Uh, we don't have catch and release laws, so in Virginia, you're not allowed to actually catch and release a possum. You have to, you can catch it on site and release it on site. So basically, if, you, if a possum were inside a person's house, you can catch the possum, take it outside and release it, but you can't actually take it to another property and release it. So you would have to euthanize the animal, put it down, and that's what you have to do. That's the law in Virginia. Now, I don't know how it is in your state. I know a lot of states have similar laws. So I'm not sure, you know, like I said, how it would apply to you. But um, if they allow for the relocation of the possum, you can catch them and relocate them. Uh, one of the best ways to catch possums is by using something like a cat food or a tuna fish, something kind of pungent. Um, possums are scavengers, and so they will come around looking for any kind of food and stuff, much like a raccoon will, trying to get into uh, trash and debris and things like that. So you can actually catch them that way. And then you can, you know, like I said, look up your local law and see what's legal for you to do and uh, how you would need to dispose of the animal or, you know, release it. Um, but as far as actually keeping a possum away, I really don't know of any deterrents that actually work. I mean, as some people will use like the urine, like coyote urine and things like that. But I honestly don't know how effective that really is. And it's just kind of gross to me. So I've never really thought of doing something like that. Um Burko says, just listening, great channel, thought I had bed bugs. It was fleas. Treated the house, yard, truck, too. Those fleas are bad. Yes, they are. Um, this is actually, the, the fleas have been really bad this year. They um, So one of the things I've been dealing with, which I have on my channel as well, if you go to um, go to my channel and, and hit the subscribe button and then go over to the videos and so one of the this is the most recent video I did Tuesday. Now this is this one I just released this morning, but the one on hornets I actually released uh, Tuesday this week. And so this is only two days old, and uh, it, it explains how to get rid of yellow jackets and hornets because a lot of people are worried about yellow jackets and hornets and how to actually get rid of yellow jackets and hornets, and they don't want to go and spray for them and get stung because it's a very common thing to get stung by yellow jackets. Especially with as dry as the year has been here in Virginia, they've been going in the ground a lot. And so uh, I released this video, and I actually, if I can, if I can get to it, I'll actually show you. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Alright. Use dust to kill hornets is because when you use a spray and you got and you spray them, while that will kill the bees that are flying back and forth in the air when you hit them in the air. Now you look at what I'm doing. Now that's that's me. 
that that's my arm, bare skin, and a glove, and a duster in my hand. And this right here is the yellow jacket nest. This is how I eliminate a nest of yellow jackets. And I didn't get stung at all. So let me mute this video and watch. See? And then I, I dust it and I get away. That is how I eliminate a nest of yellow jackets. Uh, those yellow jackets are gone, by the way. So just so you know, this is this is a way that I eliminate yellow jackets. It's just like that. And see, I actually put a camera on my duster so you could see what it looks like right up and close. Close. Here we go, right there. See how the duster, this is me with my hand in the hole, and there's the tip of the duster going right into the yellow jacket nest. See, this is what I'm talking about with dust. So even with the duster in the hole, you see how the dust is kind of blown out everywhere? Like, see, I, now it's in there. It's actually all the way in the yellow jacket hole, and the dust still comes up in the air. See here? It's all up in the air. You can't see it as well here, but it's actually right here too. This is what happens when you go and you put dust in your wall. When you're dusting in the wall of your home, no matter how well you think you can do it, no matter how safe you think you are at applying the dust, no matter what type of you know PPE you wear, it's going to puff dust out into the room. And so, and you saw it was all the way down in the ground, and it still puffed a cloud up into the air from dusting these yellow jackets. The same exact thing happens in your wall when you puff the dust in and around like a, a, a wall outlet or a light fixture or something like that. Because people will tell me on my videos, I'll say, the only place I'm putting dust is in the wall. I'm never going to come into contact with it. Well, you saw in that video there that dust puffs everywhere. Even when you put it directly in the hole, you can see the dust actually does permeate and come out of the hole, not just in the hole. It goes everywhere. So that's why I don't recommend using dust. And that's why I wanted to show that video. Yeah, I killed yellow jackets and all. That's fine. But um, actually, I'll take my hat off. I keep hitting my microphone with the derm of my hat. So I'm going to turn my hat around. So anyway, this is why I eliminate, you know, this is why I don't recommend using dust inside your home because the dust does get everywhere. Um, let's see, I'm trying to scroll up and figure out what's going on. Uh, so Carlos wants to know how to treat a car. So I actually have videos on how to treat a car. I'm not sure where they are or how old they are. Um, but you would have, if you just search automobile on my channel, you should be able to find the video on how to treat a car. Um, I've got a, so if you go... I don't, I don't do this very often, but if you go to that video, um, let's see, let's see here, and you click show more under the description. So these are all of my social media links. This is all the ways that you can get in contact with me. And the, like every single video I do, I always link the products I use in the video right here with a link to like Amazon or um, I think these are actually to... Uh, let me see. I think it's do your own. Yep. Yep. So that's do your own because it's the cheapest price. So I try to price, I pr try to price compare stuff for you guys. And I put links there that are easy for you to get a hold of, but, um, I've got crossfire, but I've actually have, if you scroll down and you're really curious about like bed bugs, I have a course on bed bugs. And if you click it and it'll take you to the course. The price is only like $16. So it's pretty cheap. And it's about 40, 36 to 40 minutes worth of information. And automobiles are included in that. So it's, if you click, let's see, let's, let's do a, a trial. Can you do a trial right here? Let me see. How do you do it? Let me click. Plus, I mean the play symbol right there. Let's see. Well, there I am. And then if you go to the ones I get for free... It looks like, see, there's the living room inspection, bedroom inspection, miscellaneous places to treat. So it's really like an ASMR because I recorded it in a quiet room and nobody was around jumping around like lunatics like my children. So 
I don't like to listen to it at all. You guys might not mind it, but I hate to listen to myself talk this way. But, you know, I go over baseboards, different things like that. But there is, oh, there's, there's a vehicle video there. So this is my van. This is, this is actually my van. And I open it up. And I actually, now I've got a sped up version of this on my YouTube channel that I did in a short. So you can find this on my shorts on YouTube on how to do this. But, see, I go to the extreme of actually cleaning everywhere you're supposed to clean before you before you actually treat the car. And the reason I used my minivan is because a van has a lot more cracks and crevices than, like, an automobile. Like, if you had, like, a Hyundai or, or a Honda or a Nissan or something like that, the van is going to be a lot more cracks and crevices to treat. So that's why I went over the van. I mean, I could have used my car but I prefer to use the van just to give you a better idea. These are the, all the places you can do to give you more of a broad variety, a broad variety because cars have bench seats, cars have captain's chairs, cars sometimes even have stowed chairs if you've got like a SUV or something like that. So I thought it was important to just show this and explain where bed bugs actually hide. So in this part of the video right here, you see the cargo, like where you lift the chairs out. A lot of people will miss this area, especially if you leave these folded in the floor all the time. We usually do. I only have three children right now. We've got a fourth one on the way. But for right now, I leave these folded down and the kids usually sit, sit in the bitch seat right here. So I can use this to stow my luggage. So if you've got like your backpacks or your, um, you know, your, your, you say you're going out of town, so you're going to Pigeon Forge or somewhere and you throw your luggage in the back, and then you go and you bring bed bugs home with you. A lot of times the, the luggage compartment is a place that they like to hide and a trunk in a regular car. So anyway, like I said, the description is actually on the description of this video. This live stream uh, is actually got a link to this same course in there too. So if it's something that you want to take a look at and you can take a look at it there, it's a lot more detailed than what you would find on YouTube. Um, but I mean... There's pretty good videos on YouTube, too. Let me show you what I meant now with my shorts. So if you go to YouTube, and you go back to my channel, and you click the videos, um, let's see, actually, let's go to home. There's the shorts. So these are my shorts. This is a new thing YouTube is doing that's kind of competing with TikTok, where you've got like the minute-long videos. It's just a minute. So this is the duster cam. This is the what I just showed you, but it's just me killing bees. It's a minute. And then I've got a Crossfire Review preview. I've been putting previews up of what I'm going to release on Tuesday. So you get that as a preview. Um, and then if you go over in the shorts, you've got How to Mix Crossfire here, uh, Lies in Pest Control. Uh, you keep scrolling over. And here's a vehicle prep, How to Inspect a Room for Bed Bugs. And that looks like that's the end of all of those. But I thought I put the treatment video in here too. If not, it's on my TikTok. So you can find that video on TikTok if it's not here. So, and that link is also below. So let's see. Um, I'm sorry, I am trying to get to everyone's questions, but I, I am very long-winded. Anyone who's watched me long enough knows I'm extremely long-winded. So, uh, hmm. Oh yes, uh, Burko says possums like nutter butters. That's absolutely true. You can catch a, a possum with a nutter butter. It's crazy. They like the peanut and the and peanut butter and the cookies. They like that. Um, what is the best way to treat a car? Okay, so I've, I've just answered that question. Kay Jenner says, thank you for all your help. So I should be okay for right now. Sunday's the second time I treated with Crossfire in three to four weeks. Yeah, you should be fine. You should be fine. Uh, give it another three to four weeks. So when I first started doing bed bug services... I would do three months of, of pest control. So so what I would do is I would come out to a person's house, and a lot of times they'd say, well, you know, I only have bed bugs in this room, or I only have bed bugs in that room, or I haven't seen any bed bugs in the living room. And I would turn the job down if they wanted just one room to treat, because I feel like the best way to treat a house for bed bugs is to do the entire house. And I would do that, plus I would require the customer to agree to a three-month contract, meaning I do my initial I do two follow-ups, 90 days worth of service, and that's the way I got rid of bed bugs. I was like 100% successful. I only, honestly, I had one house that took longer than three visits, and that's because the guy kept bringing them in out of the trunk of his car. So that's the only one ever. Well, 
when I was going back and do the second and third treatments after I switched to Crossfire, I was noticing that when I would go, I wouldn't find any bed bugs. Even after the second and the second treatment, when I go to the second time, I couldn't find a live bed bug, even in really highly infested houses. And so I felt, I talked to my wife and I told her, I said, I just feel like I can, I can approach more people. I can, I can give my service to more people. I can lower my price, do it at a much cheaper rate, and I can go in and I can just do one-time services for people and I can help a lot larger variety of people rather than sticking to just the one single demographic that can afford to pay me for three months up front. And so that's what I did. I started doing one-time services. And within the last two years, because it's it, in August, it will be two years that I started doing these, um, these one-time services. I've only gone back on like a handful of jobs. I've not really had to do any follow-ups, hardly at all. And so it's worked extremely well doing it that way. Now, does that mean you're going to have the same result? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Crossfire is a really good pesticide. Oh, we got a call. Let's see what's going on here. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. The phone was cutting out for a second. Yep. What's going on? Where are you? Where are you calling from? What's going on? <laughs> What's your problem? Oh, I'm in South Dakota. Oh, cool. Near near Mount Rushmore. Oh, man, I was just talking to my wife. I'd love to go out to Mount Rushmore one day. <laughs> oh, it's the hills are gorgeous. I mean, nothing like it. You drive up ID Stress, I go for a ride up through the Black Hills of South Dakota, and it's just God's green acres out there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a good name. It's so gorgeous, <laughs> and the water, the water out here in South Dakota is blue. So what were you Ohio, calling it's for? Brown out there. Yeah, so it, the water is blue out here. It's awesome. Anyway, um, so I was watch um, watching the uh, show that you just did a bit ago. Yeah. And I've been watching your shows for a couple of years. Okay. And now I've got bed bugs. Oh boy. See what you did? See what you did? No. <laughs> um, but I was telling this lady last week, I said, there's been a guy on YouTube that I've watched. And so I went back and watched a bunch of your videos. I got Crossfire. So my question is, I don't sleep in a bed because I'm disabled. I can't lay flat. Okay. So I live in the recliner. Like, I don't even have a bed set up in my apartment. I live in my recliner. And... Um, I have a wheelchair that I used to get around in the apartment with. So if I spray down this recliner with the crossfire, how long should I wait before I get back in the chair? So my plan was to throw a sheet over the chair after I sprayed it so that the crossfire wouldn't get on my skin because I have sensitive skin. Okay. Well, as long as you allow the chemical to dry thoroughly, you can use the chair. You don't have to worry about a sheet. You don't have to cover it. Um, it's not going to okay. transfer from the chair to you once it's dry. Uh, and so that's usually what I recommend people do. I've actually I had a customer maybe three or four years ago that had an extreme case of bed bugs. I mean, it was on the scale of one to ten. It was like a twelve. It was really, really, really bad. And she lived in her recliner yeah. and she had problems walking. She had a little hub around type uh, motor scooter that she would get around in and she would have to uh, get out of the chair. Now, it was kind of difficult to treat her house because I felt like the bed bugs were following her from her chair to her motor scooter. And you kind of need mm -hmm. to treat all of those areas. And being that you're doing it yourself and you're there and you're living there, what I would probably do is treat your motor scooter first and allow that to dry or your wheelchair or whatever it is you're moving around with. Treat that yeah, first and then right. let it dry and then use that and then treat the rest of your house after you do that. That way you can actually move around and you don't have to worry mm. about transferring the bed bugs from your personal recliner yeah. onto your clothes and then onto your wheelchair because more than likely that will happen. Yeah, um, there's a lady that's going to help me because she's going to turn the recliner upside down. It, oh, yeah, you need to do that. 
yeah, this this recliner doesn't fit on four feet. Uh-huh. This recliner has a swivel base. Okay. It rocks and it swivels, and the footrest goes up so nice. And I love the chronic pain from head to toe. Right. And this is like the main relief I can get. I don't lay it down flat. Um, but I told her, I said, I know I've got to stand by my chair. I've got things plugged in. And I said, he's talked about electronics and warm places and the electrical sockets and stuff like that um, about treating those. Well, I so, don't recommend it, really treating the electric sockets as much as actually treating the furniture you're going to use. And so if you're going to use your couch, treat your couch. Okay. And you're, you want to treat all of the furniture in your house, even if you don't sleep in your bed. If anyone might actually come and be a guest and use your bedroom, you want to make sure you treat all of these areas. Because people, and, and not only that, but you will track the bed bugs throughout the house on your own, per, just yourself. And yeah. so it is yeah. important to treat everything don't, I mean, don't skimp, do it all, yeah. but you don't have to treat in the wall or anything like that. You don't want to use Crossfire there anyway because it's electrical, but with electrical, the, yeah, yeah, and that's, that's like I was saying earlier about the dust, and that's typically the place that you would use a dust, but I don't recommend it, like I said, for the, for the novice that's to go in and try to do something like this on their own. I really don't yeah. recommend it, and I haven't used and dust I'm, in probably three years. It's not a requirement when you're using Crossfire. To, excuse me, I know that I can't use dust because I have asthma really bad, and about a month ago, I had COVID, got out of the hospital. I'm at home, but I'm on oxygen, right. and my muscles are like, ugh, crap, you know? But right. um, and I don't know how long it's going to be this way, so I told her, I don't want, no, I have liquid soap for my wash, excuse me, for my washer that um, I mix myself Okay. so that it's stuff in my apartment that I can handle as far as the fumes go. And I know you said that Crossfire doesn't smell that strong. It doesn't have a fume. That, not toxic anyway. It does have a smell to it, but it's not toxic. Okay. So once we spray the chair, turn it upside down and spray it and then sit it back up? Or turn it yeah. upside down, spray it, wait, wait for it to dry, and then turn it back up? Right. That's usually what I do. I usually just treat it all and then turn it up, turn it back over. But I wear gloves. So even if I get, yeah. you know, if I if I grab a part of the chair that's already been treated before because I'm wearing gloves, it doesn't matter. But even even the label of Crossfire doesn't even require. I mean, they mentioned on the label, I believe they mentioned that they that they recommend to use gloves, but you're not required to use gloves by the label. Like the label doesn't say you have to wear gloves to yeah. apply this pesticide. In fact, it's very safe to use around people as a whole it's not really going to affect you but it's still something that i personally you know i don't want to grab a wet hand full of you know pesticide i so i always wear yeah. the not the natural gloves is what i wear on my hands whenever i do i, I wear the the nine mil the real thick ones so they don't rip they don't tear and that way i can flip oh. furniture because the the thin the, like the five mil they are crap for doing bed bug work i have gone through in one house alone, I probably go through five or six pairs if I'm wearing those. But if I wear the real thick ones, they're the they're the good ones. That's what I recommend to use when you're treating your furniture. Where do you get those at? Oh, you can get them at Harbor Freight. Them. Harbor Freight. Yeah, okay. you can get, that's where I get mine. I, I, because I don't use them that often. I mean, if I have a bed bug job come up yeah. that I need to do, then yeah, I'll have those gloves handy. They're expensive. Harbor Freight is expensive on their gloves. But that's the only thing that yeah. I buy there is I buy now I buy my my five yeah. mil gloves that I use everywhere else I buy those uh, online, but with Harbor Freight because I'm only going through a couple of boxes every so often I I buy them there just because mm-hmm. it's easy. But yeah, okay, we have a store. Harbor Freight in town here, not too far away. Yeah, the lady that's going to be helping me she does because uh, I don't get out at all. My windows are covered with heavy curtains, blackout curtains. Mm-hmm. My eyes can't handle light sounds are like really loud and yeah it's like they drop a spoon on the floor in the kitchen and i'm covering both ears and i'm going ah! and yeah <laughs> it's just normal everyday sounds just hurt my ears so bad i was in a really bad car accident and yeah so, um um let's see was there anything else i was going to ask what is the time difference between here and there I'm Eastern time. So South Dakota, if you're on Central time, you're maybe an hour or two different from me. Yeah, it's 8.30. So right now here. it's uh, 10.30. So it's two hours different. Oh, okay. So, 
You well, have a really um, good night. I really appreciate your question, though. You've helped. You helped. It helps a lot. I wish more people would call because it does help a lot of people when they call because you don't see the chat if you watch the video later. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, I, I am. It's like when you said, you know, treat. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, the bath. Because I go literally from my chair to the bathroom and from my chair to the kitchen. The what would be a bedroom, the wall or I mean the mattress is up against the wall because I haven't been able to find a doctor yet that can help me so I can lay down and sleep, so I can lay flat again. Right. Um, yeah, and I tried that after a car accident, and oh, my God, I'm still in severe pain when I'm in the recliner, but this recliner helps so much, and I'm mortified I won't be able well, to find another the bed one. Bugs, so, so you did mention the thing about your bathroom. Bed bugs will actually live in a bathroom. They, uh, I have a, so, so on my, on my channel, the video that I do, and I'm going to show this to chat too while, while I talk to you, but the video that I do on my channel where I actually show the, it's called the extensive, A-X-T-E-N-S-I-V-E, extensive bed bug treatment. That house that I did, mm -hmm. the most expensive, the most extensive, bed, and I really wish I'd use a different word when I named this video, but the most extensive bed bug treatment on YouTube when I did that video, he had them living all around his bathtub, too, in his master bath, in his uh, uh, guest bathroom. They were all over the entire oh, house. So don't don't think that, you know, yeah. just because, you know, they say they're called bed bugs, they will absolutely live yeah. in your bathroom just as much as they will anywhere. They'll live around your yeah. commode, your bathtub, and everything. So, But I'm going to go ahead and get yeah, off I of here now, so I've, I've got to talk to chat and answer their questions, too. So you have a really great night. All right. Thank you so much for being there, man. I appreciate you so Always. much. Always. You have well, a good one. I appreciate your videos all the time. Thank all the you. time you put into them. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So, let's see. Um, That was a good call. That was a really good call, really good question. I like when people ask about recliners. Not very many people ask about recliners, but it's a really common thing for uh, bed bugs to be in recliners, especially people that are... Uh, you know, they, they sleep in a recliner. It's, it's a really, really hard place to treat. One of the things now in this video, like I was showing, let's, let's go back to this video. If you go to this extensive bed bug video that I did, I actually show how to treat. So I've got this now this here, I go to this sometimes I'll show this on channel. So if you go here, this is actually a couch. With this is a recliner on this side, and this is a recliner on this side, and this is where they've got like a like a center console where they could put like their drinks and stuff like that. And so this is for those that are curious on how to actually treat a recliner, this is a really good tutorial on how to do it. And so you can actually watch this and you can watch me. See how it's got those Velcro uh things on the back? Oh, and now we gotta add. So let's watch some ads on who to vote for. All right. So anyway, you go here and then see now I opened them all along the back. So if the backs do open, not all every chair does open, but if it does, you should open that little Velcro flap on the back of your chair. And then you can treat, see inside the chair and I'm not doing a lot. It doesn't take a lot to really treat. You want to treat around all the cracks. See how I treat the cracks in there where the pieces of wood, and this is this is one of the problems. So you see how I've got the nozzle right there. There is a void there that you maybe not may not be able to see. Let me see if I make this big. I'll see, it's got my head covering up. But um, in that void right there, that void actually goes all the way down the side. So it's the same on this side. If you can see this crack right here, that void goes all the way in, and that's the actual arm of the chair. And it goes all the way up in there, and it's a big, huge, hollow box. You need to treat inside that hollow box because if you've got a recliner, it's important to treat inside those boxes because bed bugs will hide there. In fact, let me see if it shows. All right, so you see here, there's what I'm talking about. See how this arm of this is right here? If you're sitting there and your elbow is right here sitting on that arm, the bed bugs are right there, and they can come out through the crack in the wood and bite you on your arm. In fact, they will live in these little creases right here it's really common to find them living in these creases and in these where the arm of the chair hits the the back of the chair they will live in those areas and in fact i have found them living around these little wood things too where the like the little decorative piece in these little cracks around this piece of wood they'll live there too 
maybe mothballs would make them all come out. I'm not sure what you're asking, Bama fan. Let's see. I must have forgot. I forgot. I killed yellow jackets in the ground with a mason jar full of gas at night and a match. Yes, yeah, see, I'd only recommend that. So I I have told people before. I, I have actually said, you know, I know so-and-so, and, and he used gas, and he got rid of his bees that way, and that worked for him. And I had a customer one time. I was maybe, I might have been 30 by then when I treated this one. But uh, I, what happened was the guy had uh, a gas can, and he had done exactly that. He used a gas can. He didn't use a mason jar, but he used a gas can, and he put it in the hole of the yellow jackets, and he left it in there overnight to kill the bees overnight. And the, the whole idea is that the gas won't necessarily evaporate out of the hole. Instead, it will go, and it'll permeate through the hive and kill the bees in the hive. The problem is, is that when I went out there, he, he mentioned it to me. He said, hey, by the way, can you check on this nest of yellow jackets I have in the yard? I left the gas can in the hole. It's real easy to find. I'm pretty sure they're dead, but can you just check and make sure for me? And I went over there, and I kicked that gas can off of that hole, and the first thing that happened was a bee came out and stung me. So they were absolutely still alive inside the hole. So it doesn't always work, and that's why I don't recommend using gas on bees or leaving, like you said, a mason jar in a hole full of bees or anything like that either because there is always the chance. So what happens with bees? Let me show you. Let's do a, uh, people like when I do this. Let's do a drawing with Jason today. So and I, it, it'll make it really a lot easier to understand. So let's pull out a good old paint and I'll show you why um, gas doesn't work. And I'll actually show you not only why gas doesn't work on bees, but why spray doesn't work on bees either. So let's get a big, big brush here. So if I had a, a big afro wig, I could totally pretend I was Bob Ross. But anyway, let's say your ground, your ground is like this, and your hole, there's your hole for your yellow jackets. And so you got your bees. This You're just going to imagine these are bees, okay? This is just for demonstration purposes only. All right, and then the bees are going down in the hole. All right, so most people think a nest of yellow jackets is here. And sometimes, sometimes that's where the nest is, but not always. What I have found to be the most common in yellow jackets is, let's see if I got an undo. Do I have an undo? I do have an undo, don't I? Yeah, there it is. The nest of yellow jackets typically goes like this. I really need a better mouse. Like that. So the nest is actually here inside here. So when you pour the gas in this hole, the vapor, when it evaporates, it doesn't go down in here because it's dirt. You got to imagine it's dirt. So what happens is the gas will absorb into the dirt and the vapor will come up and out like this and not actually go into the hive. The same thing happens when you spray in the hole with like a pesticide is that the bees can actually fly. And, and another thing too, when you, when the, so, so, so the reason that I use a dust and the reason that pretty much the industry standard is dust for yellow jackets is let's, let's do another hole over here. So when you spray, let's say the spray, let's, let's make the spray red. So that's death, right? All right. So there's where the spray hit, but the bee can actually fly and see now it hasn't touched the spray. Now, if you spray it on those bees, it'll kill them. But the problem is you've sprayed it at the entrance and it's there. So if a bee comes along and lands here, right there, and then crawls along the edge and then flies in the hole, it'll die because it touched a residual pesticide. But the problem is most of the bees don't do that. Most of the bees fly in like it were a runway and they avoid the chemical altogether. But if you put a dust, well, let's say like, like I was showing in the video, if you do a dust there and it's dust, then if you blow like that, it stirs the dust in the air and the wings of the bee are, are, pretty, are doing that every time they fly in and out of the hole. The wings are making a little bit of an air turbulence stirring up the dust sticking to the bee, and then the bee takes it into the hive and kills all the bees. And usually within 24 hours, yellow jackets are dead. So that's the recommended that I do for actually getting rid. That's why I recommend, you know, dust for bees is because I just find that it works better to do it that way. 
So let's actually, we'll leave that open just in case I need to draw something else for you. So hopefully that, that explains it because that, that, that whole procedure, that's what I recommend to do for uh, getting rid of bees. That's how I do it. That's how I've done it since I was 12. I believe the very first nest of bees that I ever did, I was 12 years old. I've only been stung five times on the job in 33 years of, of pest control. I've only been stung five times. And so uh, it doesn't happen very often. In fact, only two times I was stung where I knew where the hive was. Three times they, they caught me by surprise. So I didn't know where they were. Does heat work? No, heat does not work. Um, in the Yellow Jacket video, I don't remember hearing you mention what specific product you use when I watched the video. I used uh, Alpine D-Dust, and I did actually mention it in the video, but it's Alpine D-Dust. That's what I use to kill Yellow Jackets. Um, uh, James says, my computer chair has tears in it. Could bed bugs stay hidden deep in the chair even after treating it? It's a possibility, but they're going to come out to bite you, and they're going to get on the treated chair uh, when they come out of the chair to bite you. Uh, James Martin says, uh, bed bugs only need to feed 10 days, sometimes longer. So yes, they could still be in the chair. Crossfire keeps killing for 30 days. Yeah, but bed bugs can actually live for up to 18 months without a, um, without a blood meal. So, but they do typically come out and bite you when you're sitting right on them. They're going to want to come out and bite you. Um, so let's see. I can't see says sunshine um james martin if they used heat treatments the bed bugs could have retreated deep into the insulation to escape the heat so they very well could still be inside yes that's correct if they used heat that is correct that is how heat works that's why heat doesn't work that's why heat is not effective is because bed bugs do retreat away from the heat now sometimes heat works i'm not going to say heat never works sometimes heat does work but a lot of times when it doesn't work, the reason it doesn't work is because the bed bugs are going into the wall. Maybe they tried to do a heat treatment on a trailer, which doesn't hold heat, or they tried to do heat on a house that was too old that also has holes and cracks and maybe bad windows to where the heat can't stay in the house. So it creates a lot more cold spots. So I don't really recommend using heat for the control of bed bugs. I think Crossfire works better. But um, they could have used a chemical that would chase the bed bugs as well. But I don't, I, I mean, I really don't honestly think, so like this, this, this is an office chair here. This is my office chair. Like the bed bugs can hide in places like this. If this were to separate, which I've seen that before, if the, if the uh, actual, like the threads were to separate and it broke open, or if the leather right here were to crack open, it would leave like a seam so that the bed bugs could actually get into the chair itself. That's actually possible. I have found bed bugs living in chairs like that. In fact, Last year, because everyone was stuck at home working from home, uh, people were having desk chairs that were actually infested with bed bugs that I was actually having to treat their desk chairs because, I mean, they were working, you know, anywhere from 6 to 12 hours a day. They were sitting at their desk all day, and so the bugs were living there. Just like you heard me explain to the lady that called earlier is that if you're living in a chair, the bed bugs are going to live in the chair with you. If you are working in a chair, offices are bad like this. So, so I've actually heard of offices locally um, that have infested with bed bugs because people have brought them in, and because they work in a cubicle all day, they end up with bed bugs in their cubicle, and they actually will live on the chairs and around the desks and stuff like that. So yeah, it's absolutely possible that the bed bugs are living around your desk or on your chair. Um. So I'm going to do a, so Justin asked, if I use a steamer, how long do I need to hold the steam over a crack or an area to kill bed bug eggs, nips, and adults? It's just a few seconds. Uh, depends on how hot your steamer gets, but I'm actually going to show a tutorial on how to steam a mattress. Um, my, I'm going to use a bed that I've got here, and I don't have bed bugs on it. It's going to be for demonstration purposes only, but... It's, uh, I'm gonna, I actually ordered a steamer, and so I'd like to steam clean one of my mattresses in the house, and so I'm going to show you exactly how to steam clean a mattress for bed bugs because I believe steam is a better option than a total heat treatment. I think it's a good option for if you want to kill eggs. So I did have somebody that came and left a comment on one of my videos. Now, I deleted the comment because it was derogatory, and it was, you know, that didn't really, you know, provide any corrective criticism, but... I am actually going to go over the comment right now with you, and I'm going to not say the derogatory things that he said, or she. 
Maybe it was a girl. I don't know. Anyway, um, the point is, is that the guy came in and he said that I quoted in one of my videos, it was in my Crossfire video, that uh, Crossfire claims on the label to kill the eggs of bedbugs, which it does do. And I will show you. So let's go here. Let's pull it up. And I went over this, and actually, I go over this all the time. So if you go to the to the label of Crossfire, it says, kills bed bugs and bed bug eggs, scientific key formulated to kill pyrethroid resistant and or field and or wild bed bug strains. So that's including like bat bugs and stuff like that. So it says it kills bed bug eggs. So I want to explain what that means. And let me zoom in so you guys can see that it actually says that. Bed bug eggs, right there. All right, it says that. I understand it says that. But you need to understand how insects work. So insects, some insects, if they die today, and they still have eggs, tomorrow their eggs can hatch. Even though the mother is dead, the eggs can hatch. Um, but with bed bugs, if you kill a bed bug mother who has yet to lay her eggs, her eggs die with her. Because she, she, the eggs actually just stay outside of the female's body. But there are some insects where the eggs actually just stay inside the female's body. So that she actually will raise the eggs to maturity and they are ready to hatch. When she drops the egg, they are ready to hatch. And those eggs will survive if you kill the female. But in a bed bug, it kills the bed bug eggs because they are still in the female. This is how the pesticide works. You can spray crossfire on a bed bug egg and it will not kill a bed bug egg. I've done this personally myself. I know that it will not kill the bed bug egg. But when the nymph hatches from the egg, it will die. So the eggs themselves don't die, but the nymphs will when they hatch out of the egg and crawl through the pesticide. So the reason the steam is an option is because a steam cleaner will kill the eggs because it's extreme heat directed right on top of an egg. It burns the egg and kills it. So that is how it works. Oh, you like my shirt? I might play too many video games. I grew up, I actually got it in the mail today. I ordered two of them. I got one with Super Nintendo and one with regular Nintendo. So <laughs> I like my I like my Nintendo games. Um so Anyway, so steams, I, I am going to do a tutorial on how to steam a mattress. Just to answer your question, Justin, it's, it's too hard to answer your question. It's, I mean, I can tell you, so when you're steaming a mattress, you want to kind of go slow over the areas like, you know, I, is that good enough? I mean, I'm not exact, without showing you, I'm not very good at explaining how to steam clean a mattress without actually showing you how to do it, but that's how you do it. If you, it depends on the attachments. It depends on you know what all you're using, what type of steamer you're using, what brand, how hot is it. The one I've got gets up to above 200 degrees, and so that's what I recommend in a steamer. In fact, I have a steamer that I do recommend for bed bugs. If you go to my Amazon page, which the link is below, and you go to bed bug supplies, this is the one I recommend. Um, this is a really nice one. It uh, it has all kinds of attachments. So if you were to use like this attachment right here, I can't show you because it won't let me, but this one, you can see the big picture, that one right there, and you can put this little steamer pad on it and you can go over your mattress with it and you could actually put the steam directly where it needs to go. You can also use this crevice tool right here that attaches to the wand and that one there, you can get right in along the seams of the mattress with this. And so I recommend using that for seams and this for the overall mattress and box springs as well. So... Yeah, that's that's what I recommend. I don't know, but these are really more or less for cleaning like floors and stuff like that. But the tools I would use for the mattress would be this one here and this one here with this little, this is actually a little rag that goes over top of this tool to, uh, and you could probably use this tool just by itself on the mattress, but I usually use the, the rag. I cover it with that. And then you can see, you can actually see the bed bugs will come off on it you'll it'll actually rub them off like a cloth it's like using an extremely hot 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 washcloth directly on them so that's that's what i recommend using for a mattress 
and like I said, it's in my it's in my Amazon page. Now I did post a link to this on my YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you subscribe, and then you go over to the community tab here, I actually posted a link to it right there. I um, the steam cleaner is one of the best for bed bugs and is on sale right now on Amazon. So I actually did post that to show because I try I try to stay on top of sales for things like bed bugs, roaches, and stuff like that. So I always will put links, various links in my in my community tab. But I also have a Discord um, where people actually chat. And that is also in the link below. So if you go to like... Let's see. Let me see if I can do this and not show everything. So this is my Discord channel. This is my general chat channel with, you know, all the people that... And it, all the people that are members of the channel. And I've got bed bugs here where I've been talking to bed, about bed bugs, cockroaches... Spiders. Don't really have anybody in my spider channel. I really wasn't sure how well that would go over. I've got termites. I got memes that I have posted. Some crazy, some about bugs, some not. Um, I post my a lot of my videos from TikTok go here too. The ones that they allow me to post. And then I've got fleas there. And then I was actually thinking about maybe after my live streams doing a voice chat. I was going to start doing that if I can get on early enough. So I can do a voice chat there, and maybe you guys, when when I'm done chatting here, I can just sit down, sit back, and maybe play a game or something with you guys and talk to you over voice about anything that we may have gone over on the show. And so that's another way you can talk to me too. So anyway, that's in the link below too, by the way. It's Discord's in, in the links. So let's see. Um, wasn't able to see all of your drawing. Your frame was blocking it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm, oh, that's awful. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Let's see if I can show you again about the bees. Let's, let's pull that up one more time. I still have it. Oh, it did, didn't it? It did. It totally did. Well, no, it didn't really block much of anything. You didn't really see anything. It didn't really miss that much. Let's see here. I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, stop doing that. Okay, let's see here. Oh my goodness. I am not having. Oh, look at that. That's my wife. For those that never have seen her, there's a face reveal. So anyway, I got to get off of that. I'm not supposed to be showing her. She don't like being shown. So there you go. Oh, it did it again. Why is it doing that? It's like double clicking and I don't want it to. There we go. So that that's the picture I showed. For those of you that haven't seen it. So there's there's the first picture I showed. And there's the second picture. So anyway. Let me cover that back up. Um, Let's see. Ambrose just gave me $2. I appreciate that, Ambrose. You didn't have to do that. That's You, you didn't even say anything. You just, you just, well, thank you very much. Usually people do the super chats because they have something they want to ask. But thank you. I appreciate that. Because if I miss your question, that is one way to, to be sure that I see it. Because it makes a big, huge, bold thing there in chat. Um, so let's see. Um, Ambrose, how well does Crossfire aerosol, aerosol spray work compared to moving the concentrate? So I would, I would recommend the concentrate over the aerosols. The reason that I recommend aerosol is because uh i mean i don't recommend aerosol now aerosol is really convenient and if it's all you can get then that's fine and if it's all you're able to use you're just going to have to use more of it because it's going to break down faster than the concentrate mixed will so that's why i recommend um aerosol i mean i don't recommend aerosol is because it just doesn't last as long as the mixed concentrate it's a good chemical. It's not bad. It's just not as good. There are better options. And aerosol, when you take the price of the aerosol and the amount you're going to have to go through, it's still cheaper just to buy the, the concentrate and mix it yourself. Even if you have to buy the jug and everything. So, um, Fam says, I live in a single family home. There is something biting me at night. I think it's bed bugs, even though I haven't seen one. But I'm the one, the only one getting bit. So I think they're just in my room. So 
you really need to make sure you have bed bugs. It may not be bed bugs. It, it could be carpet beetles. It could be mosquitoes. It could be fleas. There are lots of things. It could be ants. You might just have ants coming in your room only, biting you. Maybe you have a set of glass of water on the bedside table. Maybe you've got a problem with maybe a piece of snack food or something fell down behind the bed and you don't know it's there. And the ants are coming in and of course they'll bite you too. So there's lots of different things it could be. If you haven't seen any bed bugs, don't automatically rule that it is bed bugs because it might not be bed bugs. Um, if you're really totally positively sure that that's what it is, but you still haven't found any and you're not sure where they're living, then I would recommend getting a bed bug dog to come in and check and make sure, just to clear and make sure. If the bed bug dog will show you where the bed bugs are if you're not sure where they are. James says, I have a cleaning job. When I come home, I spray my shoes with alcohol and keep work clothes separate. Is that good enough? Um, I mean, you can treat your shoes with Crossfire. Crossfire is actually legal to use on your shoes. It's labeled to do that. So um, I recommend to, to treat your shoes and treat your uh, bags, handbags, and stuff like that so that you don't, rec so you don't bring them in with you. But if you know someone that you're working for that actually has bed bugs then you'll want to avoid that. You'll want to make sure that you wash your clothes. Um, if you can come in through your laundry room like I can, so like behind me, uh, right right over there, is a door, and uh, that's where my laundry room is. And so it actually exits to the outside of the house. It's a basement. And so I can come in and out through that door. And so I come in, and I, I take all my clothes off when I go do a bed bug job, and that way I can throw them directly in the washer and wash them up, dry them, and then I don't have that problem where I'm... Uh, you know, I'm bringing bed bugs in the house just in case. Uh, Bruco says, good night. Thanks for helping. Thank you for coming. Thank, hey, just so, I, I, I'll say this right now. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate everybody that comes in here. I've got 27, 27 people sitting here watching me run my mouth about bugs. I appreciate you. It's, it gives, it, it, when I first started streaming, I mean, let's, let me show you. Let me show you. Let's go trip down memory lane. All right, let's look at these. Um, my live streams, let's see, do I have live streams? Maybe I can't find them that easy. Is it not that hard? I have so many live streams. Past live streams, here we go. Oh, see, it only keeps so many. Oh, wow, it goes way back. So this is like, this is from way long time ago. So this is the way my live streams used to look. Right here. Alright. 200 views from 4 years ago. Uh, 752 views from 4 years ago. See, I was doing them back then, but I didn't do them that often. See, that was four, That was just a few. And then I go to 3 years ago, and we're talking about cluster flies. And then, you know, 62 views on the... It's crazy. I've got 27, almost... I've got 30 people in here right now. It's, it's crazy. So I just appreciate everybody coming and hanging out with me, talking with me, chatting with me, learning about bugs with me. So, And sometimes we have to look up bugs. And then I learn something new too. And we learn together. So I, wanna, I just want to say I appreciate my audience. If that's... Like the video. Give me a thumbs up. It helps. It helps a lot. Justin. Thanks. My steamer manual said to hold half inch away for five seconds to disinfect. So that was my assumption. My steamer is the direct competitor to the neat you showed. $170 McCullough MC1375 works well. If yours works, that's great. Um, so Jennifer says hit the like. So yeah, hit the like. I appreciate it. If you, if you like it. If not, hit dislike. Yeah, if you really don't like it. So if you got, like, you looking at my live stream and you don't like me, you click there and, uh, there I am. There's that. Look at that. Is crazy. Look at that guy right there talking about his videos. And you just click this little button. See, now I only have 16. I got 16 thumbs up. I got zero thumbs down. So if you don't like me, click a thumb down. Like, like see, I, I, I dislike this. See? I like this. I dislike this. But click this button, too. So, But if you don't like what I got to say, tell me. I'd like to hear it. Hey Jason, I just sprayed my house yesterday with Talstar and I'm still seeing many mosquitoes. What do I do? What do I do? My backyard is all cement, no grass or standing water. Yes, but how far away are your neighbors? 
you know, one of the things about mosquitoes that you've got to understand, so I don't sell mosquito work. I don't, I purposely don't sell mosquito work. And the reason I don't sell mosquito work is because people aren't happy. People aren't happy if you can't kill every single mosquito in their yard. It, the, the, the realization is that you just can't do it. It's not possible to get rid of every mosquito because they'll come from the neighbors. Uh, Tau Star does work really well on mosquitoes, but that doesn't mean you're not going to still have them flying around. This is the way it works with any flying insect. If you have flies, which a mosquito is a type of a fly, it's a biting fly, and they fly. Just like I showed in that video, until the, the until the mosquitoes, because you can't you can't spray everywhere, not really, you know. And so the places that you treat are places that are naturally going to attract things like mosquitoes like around dust to dawn lights, porch lights, um, and your windows, you know, around your windows and your doors and your cracks and crevices where the mosquitoes are going to get in, around your screens and places. And that way, when the mosquito tries to get in your house, they die. Um, that's how you get rid of mosquitoes. And it takes time because even though they fly around, they'll eventually land into the chemical and they'll die. But it takes time. They're going to bite you first. They'll probably bite you three or four times before they go and find a place to sit down. So, uh, Jennifer says, alcohol is flammable. Absolutely. I don't recommend using alcohol for bugs ever because it's flammable and because several people burn their house down. Sunshine says, your titles haven't been clickbait enough. You know, I got some clickbait video. Look at this. Look at these videos here. Let me show you some. I got some really crappy clickbait videos. Um... This one says, Yellow Jackets, you won't believe how easy this is. I think that's a good clickbait video. It don't have very many views. But one of the reasons my videos don't get views is because I don't always talk about bed bugs. Now, I'm talking here to you tonight. It's the bed bug show. We've talked a lot about bed bugs. We haven't just talked about bed bugs. We've talked about, you know, I just talked about mosquitoes with, uh, with John, you know. So we're not just talking about mosquitoes. We're talking about, I mean, bed bugs. See, there's a millipede video. I put this out <clears throat> this morning, 206, all right? Uh, if I put out a video about bed bugs, it'll have five, 600 by the night, you know, because people like the bed bug stuff. But I'm an exterminator. I talk about a lot of things, not just bed bugs. So I'm kind of going against YouTube's algorithm in that I'm not just a bed bug channel. I'm a channel about all kinds of pest control. So... A lot of times you won't see my videos unless I get you guys liking my videos. When you see them pop up, give me a thumbs up and like them if you really like them so that YouTube sees that and they're like, oh, that person actually likes that video. We need to show that video to their audience too because they actually want to see that too. That's the way the YouTube algorithm works. You have to like it. So it's really, I make the videos, you like the videos, YouTube shares my videos with other people with similar interests to you. That's the way the algorithm works. It's very difficult to um, to do it, but I use. I don't care, you know. I really don't care. I mean, I am talking in my car. I don't have the best like video equipment. I don't have the best sound equipment. I mean, I got a Blue Yeti, but it doesn't really work that well, you know. It really doesn't. I've looked. I've listened back through. I don't know how these guys get these awesome boom sounding mics. They probably have the whole, you know, the setup and everything. I'm not. I just sit here. And I tell you about bugs. Like, I got this ring light, and I forgot to turn it on. Let's see. How do I get that thing on? Look at that. See, that's like bright. Look, whoa, it's like the sun, you know? And and I forgot to even turn that thing on. So I'm, I'm like, I'm half-assing it, honestly. <laughs> I'm not. Look at that. Look how bright that thing is. Look at that. So I'm just doing what I think you guys want to see. So you got to tell me what you want to see. One of uh, feed stores has the aerosol, and if I remember correctly, when I read the label, it didn't have a residual. Most aerosols don't have a residual. Uh, Calderon says, I sprayed two weeks ago, and I noticed a few stains still on the pillowcases. Is that normal? Yes. So I already answered this question once tonight. It is actually possible to have uh, bites up to a month later after you've applied. Let's see. Hey man, I get people asking me all day how do I how do I deal with bugs? We appreciate your work for us and the clients. Well, thank you. Um, 
Jennifer Lego says that was BC before Charlie. <laughs> I'll show y'all. Oh, let me see. Do I have a picture of Charlie? I might have a picture of Charlie. Let me see here. I sent you a message on Discord, Jennifer, the other day, but I never did get a response. You must not be on there very often. Let's see if I've got... Um, where is my business page? Because it is on my business page. Let's see. Page... Green Acres. Um, let's see. Copy image. And I think that will let me do it. If I do this and then do... There we are. There's my family. So... Oh, man. I, my wife says I shouldn't do this, though. I probably shouldn't do this. But that's my family. There's me and Rory and Emma and Charlie. There's Charlie. So... I got a nice family. Love my family. So let's see here. Um, this is helping me get through the most difficult time in life so far, says James. Good. I'm glad. Um, the Real Duct Tape Bandit, Bandit says, hello from Oklahoma. Hello. You're here all the time. You're always here, Duct Tape Bandit. Um, Ryan says, um, what's your product of choice and best way to get rid of springtails. So I have a video on springtails. If you go to my channel. and to, What in the world? Is my V button? There we go. Springtails. There it is. I'm, um, let's see. Let me click that. And then share. Copy. And I'll post it in the chat for you. There you go. HP Lifestyle says, we've sprayed three times every two weeks, two times with Crossfire, once with Tempered. We spray the entire house and all cars. We're still getting bitten a lot. We're getting bitten a lot less. Do you suggest we continue to spray? Um, are you sure it's bed bugs biting you and not something else? Uh, so the Real Duct Tape Bandit says, my friend sprayed her house Tuesday with Crossfire, and I'm spraying mine Monday with Crossfire. I got them from her. I always hit the thumbs up. You have taught me so much. Well, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. It does help. I mean, I don't think you realize just how much just one thumbs up will help. Um, uh, Jason, let's see. Temperid FX is really good product. Have you ever used it for flies and general pests? No, I don't. Temperid is imidacloprid. Imidacloprid is good for a lot of things. Imidacloprid is amazing. It's an amazing pesticide. It is good. Um, I like it for ants, especially. It's really good for ants. Jennifer Lego says, not much. I got a notification. I didn't know it was for me. Yes, it was for you. I sent you a, I, I, I sent you, I, I'll, I'll, I'll message you after the show tonight. I'll send you a message. Um, the Real Duct Tape Bandit says, I honestly don't care about a ring light <laughs> and all that crap. The information you share with us is why I click. You have a beautiful family, but your wife is right. There are weirdos out there. Yeah. Any advice on getting rid of clothes moths and how do they get... Okay, yeah, mothballs. Mothballs work to get rid of a clothes moth. So if you take, take your mothballs and put them in your closet, close the door, it'll kill, it'll kill your moths in your, in your closet. Sunshine says, comments, good or bad, works for the algorithm. Also, it can just be a casual statement made in a video that is suddenly popular. Happened to a friend of mine. His video suddenly blew up after two years. Yeah, see, I, that happened to me, so... My very first video went semi-viral. My very first one I ever made. And, and it's crazy because I never would have thought that ever that people would want to know about bugs. And it's the one my wife actually told me to do. So I'm a legacy YouTuber. Um, which legacy YouTubers are people who were on YouTube before Google acquired YouTube. Because Google bought YouTube. So that's all the same organization now. But before Google bought YouTube and YouTube was just YouTube. I had videos. So I used to play um, Final Fantasy XI with my friends, and I used to film. I used to do the Let's Plays on Final Fantasy, and it never really hit off, but it was really just for me and my friends. And they were horrible. It just showed basically how horrible we were. And she's like, if you have a YouTube channel, you should really get on and do videos for, pet, for pest control. You need to tell people this stuff. And so my first video... Uh, actually hasn't gotten very many more hits in the last couple of years, but 
if you look here and you go to videos and you sort by the oldest so this will be the oldest video is this one right here why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs and it's 163,000 views that's my oldest video why heat treatments don't work for bed bugs and then my third video was how do stink bugs get inside my home that's 13,000 views and this is over four years this is four years ago so you know that was my first video and it got to 193,000 views within like or 180,000 views within the first like three or four months it was up there so I I mean be some redneck here from Virginia like I am it's it's hard to believe that I had that many in on my channel so I was like well maybe people do want to know about bugs so I, I should probably talk about them so I started talking about them because I did not you go back you watch that video it's cringy it's awful it's it's really bad because I mean I was new to YouTube I didn't know what to do I didn't know I have to sit here and look at the camera I didn't know I need to act like I'm sitting in the room talking with you people get so irritated if you're like yeah, it's talking out to the distance. Yeah, I'm gonna just talk right here. You know, be, you got to look at the camera. You got to treat it like you're talking to that person. It's oh, there. It's so awful. It's such a it's such a horrible video. But people still watch it. People still comment to this day on that video. So, Andre says, "Hey, Jason, have you used insecticide containing? No, I haven't. Proxer? I ha I don't think so. I might have." Let's see. For bed bug control, Propoxer has recently been found to be very effective on bed bug populations, with use of Propoxer aerosol resulting in a 100% mortality rate of bed bugs in professional tests. Um, it doesn't look like they have it here. Hmm. Uh, it's a carbamate. Hmm. In 1959. Let's see. It's an environmental hazard. So let me show you what I'm looking at. This is what I'm looking at. Propox. It may be illegal. In Virginia. Uh, Bagon. So it's Bagon. That's what it is. So let's do that. Bagon. Oh, Bagon. Is it at Lowe's? No. I've heard of this. I have heard of this. Bagon, do-it-yourself exterminator has been discontinued. So it looks like it's been outlawed in the U.S. That you can't actually buy this in the U.S. anymore. So I've never used it, but I have heard of it. I've heard of Bacon as the name brand. If anybody else understands, let me know. Um, the Real Duct Tape Bandit. What do you suggest I do for a mouse problem like as far as traps and stuff? So I use bait. Um, in fact, if you go to my Mouse Monday um, and you click here, you can watch this. I, I recommend doing this. Let's see. I can actually, I think I can share, let's see, um, how do I share, let's see, let's share, copy, oh man, man, made a lot of people mad, see, I got 94, look, I got 94 dislikes on that video, 68,000 views, 94 dislikes, a lot of people don't like that video, I don't know why, I don't know why, I never know why people don't like, but don't like my videos, they don't really say, but, anyway, so that's what I recommend watching that for mice. Um, let's see. Yes, I'm sure we have bed bugs. Okay, so HP Life says, yes, I'm sure we have bed bugs. We have a sniffer dog and we've seen a bed bug and a PCO found a nymph. Should we continue to spray? Yes, you should. If you're still getting bit, you should still spray. Sunshine says, I'm in South Texas. We're overrun with stink bugs, but I've never heard of anyone having them in their house. I have them. We have them. Really bad. They're really bad here. Stink. Bug. See? I got video. Stink bugs. What are stink bugs? Where do stink bugs come from? 
And why are stink bugs in my house? Also, how to get rid of stink bugs, flies, wasps, and ladybugs, guaranteed. So I go over stink bugs in that video right there. Right there. So yes, stink bugs are a problem here in Virginia. Jason, can you make a video of your pest control car? Want to see your setup. You want to see my setup? Why you want to see my setup? I just showed you my car with my family in front of it. I drink a lot of water. It's been almost an hour and a half and I didn't even realize it's been that long. See, this is what's good. I got 32 people in here right now. My video, let's see. Let's look. I'm about, I got to pull a Jennifer here. And I got to see how many people. 22 likes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Need more thumbs up. I appreciate it. But anyway, um, I'm going to have to get out of here. I got to go to bed. I actually have a long trip tomorrow I got to make. Got to kill some bugs in the morning and then drive all the way to Charlottesville. Kill some bugs. So I hope you guys are doing all right. I hope everybody has a good sleep and, and you sleep well. I'm going to go and get off of here and get to bed. Uh, Yandre says, um, Yandre, Yandre, Yandre says, can I treat my house with crossfire after, after apprehend? I would not treat with crossfire after, after apprehend. I would let the apprehend do its job. It's 90 day press decide it's going to kill the bed bugs. But hey, real duct tape bandit, if you go join a discord, join a discord and message me there. I'm always there. Always. Always. I like Discord. It's like texting. And I use it on my phone. I have it on my phone. So, you know, I can talk to you while I'm in the bed. And not have to worry about sitting here at my computer. I'm always available. I try to make myself available to everybody all the time. I know I don't have to, but I like to. I enjoy it. So, I don't mind. If you still have questions and you want to ask me, join up with the Discord. Send me Jennifer will tell you. I'm on there all the time. I talk. I don't mind. I get off of here. I say I'm tired. I go to bed and I talk on Discord. So, I don't mind talking to you. So, y'all have a real great night. I really appreciate it. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And I'm going to get off of here and get me some sleep. Y'all have a good one.